welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 147. This episode is with stunt coordinator, stunt rigger, and my new friend Joe Perez. He is awesome. We talk about him doing martial arts growing up, how he got his start in the business doing live stunt shows, getting a burrito from Jackie Chan, what the process is to send someone flying through the air, how a casket tried to kill him, his time working on that Nathan Fillion Uncharted fan film, his favorite episode of The Mandalorian that he worked on, and so much more. Joe is so fun. He is such a blast to chat with. Uh, so get ready for a good time. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 147, with Joe Perez. Theme song time. <laughs> try to make sure we're ready when we get back sure sure are you are you usually a morning person yeah i mean uh the drive is a good 40 miles uh to work every day so i just try and get there you know, that'll do it before traffic <laughs> yeah exactly sure no matter what my call time is i'll be there early if i need to <laughs> sure sure and at least you got that time to wake up as well yeah exactly makes sense makes sense do you breakfast i'm not a breakfast guy no yeah i tend to wait till a little bit after we get into it you know yeah I think, yeah. stand by me with this. I feel like breakfast food tastes better as dinner. You ever had like breakfast uh, for dinner? You are talking to the kid who ate cereal three times a day, so yeah. Boom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad. I'm not alone in this now. Like, no. I, eggs are best for dinner. It's just, I don't totally. know why. It just is. Totally. It just yep. is. Yep. You're, so you're, you're in California, yeah? Correct. Okay, so you're three hours behind me. It's currently almost 5 p.m. where I'm at. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right, so how's that? The future's looking all right. It's not too bad. <laughs> cool. It's not too bad. Cool. We're st still here, as far as exactly. I can tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, dude. I can't believe you listened to some episodes of the show beforehand, so thank you for that. Yeah, man. Yeah, they're, they're really, like I said, I don't know what I bring to the table. They're, yeah. they're pretty full, <laughs> filled up, man. <laughs> it, it raises the bar. It's always funny. I, I talk to people. My favorite people to have on are the ones that listen beforehand because it makes me nervous because there's the bar. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you have no idea, right. you're like, right. oh, sure, that sounds cool. I'll come on, which is amazing. But when you heard it before, I'm like, oh, no, there's expectation. Well, right. here we are. You know, so I, I, I think I live on that stress level. Like I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I work in that group of people where uh, everybody knows how it should be done yep. and every, yep. everybody expects you to do it better. So <laughs> yeah, that, that makes you that. raise it though. Like you have exactly. to be on par, you know what I mean? hundred percent, hundred percent. I prefer it. I, it's the way to go. It's the way to go. So what, are you from California? Born and raised. Yep. Oh, yeah. right on, right on. What part? Yeah. Uh, I was born in North Hollywood, but I uh, moved to uh, Northridge uh, when I was about eight. There you go. How do you like it? Yeah. Uh, I love it. You know, I've been all around. Um, I think my second place, oddly enough, uh, when I did Dead Snow 1 and 2 over in Norway, mm -hmm. uh, it was such such a different yeah. environment, but uh, everybody was so chill. I just, I, I liked it out there. Do you, so, like, what kind of stuff were you into as a kid? Let's see. Martial arts. Um, gotta be gotta be yeah uh not gymnastics as much uh i feel like um i don't know i feel like they expected me to because i was built like a, a four foot cube yeah um to, <laughs> to be just a, a tumble maniac you know just a unit um yeah you know and uh i didn't i didn't like that kind of competition i liked martial arts competitions i went to a lot of tournaments oh cool um, as, as a kid, so uh well my first black was in taekwondo Dude. Uh, but I studied very traditional uh, Japanese um, jujitsu uh, called. Oh, uh, cool! Yeah, Daitoru jujitsu. Yeah. Um, so between those and then working, which is weird, is you get to work with all these grandmasters in these B type movies. You know? Sure. Like, oh yeah. Uh, I learned a lot on set and then being invited out over the weekends uh, from Eric Lee. Oh, uh, cool! Yeah, his kung fu is you know fantastic. He was the king of kata back in the day, and yeah, you know, somebody I, I aspired to train with. So. How yeah, cool is that? 
I'm totally, totally blessed, totally privileged to just be hanging out with the guy on set, right? <laughs> yeah. It's funny how that works, isn't it? Because you've got like the martial yeah. arts world, which can be very competition based a lot of the time. But then when you get into like stunts and film and stuff, you're working with people like TJ Storm and stuff. And you're like, yep. oh, what? Yep. Bonkers. Yeah, yeah. Bonkers. And TJ's awesome. I do. I love that guy. He, he came <laughs> yeah. on last year, I think. Just the yeah, nice. Yeah. You would never know. He's like the nicest person ever because he's built well, like it, a titan. Well, <laughs> well, it's just why you would be nice. Like, why, yeah, you know true. what I mean? <laughs> what, what, a, what threatens him? <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> I, you know, I was just talking to somebody about that mentality recently. It was about like uh, going to jail, funnily enough. And it was yeah. like, peop- there's that mentality of like, when you first get to jail, find the biggest guy and hit him. But in real right. life, you don't do that because usually the biggest guy is super nice and everybody likes him. And I was like, yeah. oh my God, there's so yeah. many people that are watching these movies that are going to get in trouble if they go to jail. Well, they're in jail. They're already in trouble. Never mind. Right. <laughs> well, being. Uh... I guess five foot, five foot four my whole life sure. uh, in every, in every direction. Um, <laughs> there would be like the five foot nine kind of bullies I dealt with, you know, they weren't quite six sure. feet, but sure. they would have a chip. And uh, mm-hmm. I think one time I actually was able to spit it out once. I'm like, first, what do you gain? <laughs> what do you gain by beating me up? Like how yeah. cool do you look? And second, how bad do you look when I'm off the floor with you? Like, Damn right, dude. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. it worked I, once and then i was like wow i'm never gonna be able to pull that off again right you only need one that's it right exactly <laughs> that's funny i feel you dude i feel i was four foot ten when i graduated middle school so i yeah. went into high school at like five foot and stuff like that and that's when i remember i did martial arts growing up as well and i remember my dad who's like a vet and all that stuff and he's like listen listen you can't condition your throat and I was like, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> and he's 100%. like, you're smaller than they are. You're right at the perfect angle. Here's how to handle this. And I was like, I've unlocked the key. This yep. is it. <laughs> <laughs> this, that's totally true. And these are things that you, you pass down in family. You know, like, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I teach my kids. I teach my kids a certain curriculum that's not really for the schools. That's right. That's right. This will get you thrown out of competitions, just so you know. <laughs> right. Right. Do not use this in tournament situation. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. So if you grew up doing martial arts, when did you decide you wanted to do like entertainment, like stunts and whatnot? Ah, that's kind of funny. So when I was about hmm, 16, 17, uh-huh. uh, a, f- a friend of mine down the block who we seemed to have the same interests. He did a lot of live shows like at Universal and whatnot. Oh, cool. Um, but back then it was the little thumbs up editor was like the new thing. And it, all it did was mm-hmm. offset offset where the uh, VHS recorder would hit the, the yeah. pause. <laughs> right. And, I'll, and I'm pause. So that's all that did. But we would cut ourselves into like Magnum P.I., Oh, Hunter. sweet. Like, <laughs> so, like, if TC got knocked out of frame, I'd have a big Hawaiian shirt and fall into frame, you know, oh, and we'd do a little so fight cool. and then send the other guy back. Yeah, it's it's craziness. But that's kind of how we got the eye for, like, realizing, you know, you really want to sh- shoot and cut yourself to be uh, better at what people tell you you need to fix. Like, sure. if somebody says, uh, you're not really stacking that hit well enough, you know exactly what they're talking about. You don't right. have to be shown you know or walk over to monitor and have them play it back for you that kind of thing like mm-hmm. you see that your elbow's dropping you're not throwing this you're kind of nancy in this punch i don't know if that's even that's probably not politically correct anymore <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, i'll say that i follow my head for a living and that's just that's right that as the way ever um right. but yeah you'll you'll find things you got happy feet you know they're all jumping up and down when you should be stable sure uh, that kind of stuff you don't really see until you video yourself and edit it and really take a look at yourself that helps i think people a lot more as they come into the industry uh to be more useful on the spot you know ah that's a great point is i just had a guy on recently who's a martial arts buddy of mine and he talked about how uh technology is forwarding the way you can critique yourself because you can watch your you can watch playback of like cause that you're doing you're like oh which people didn't have until like fairly recently yeah that's interesting and when I say like uh, video ourselves, it was the big lunchbox VHS. Yeah, with, <laughs> the, the shoulder with the, rigs. <laughs> yep, with a battery you had to carry around, and it wasn't going to last long. Yeah, that that's <laughs> yeah. when you knew you were doing what you're supposed to, because that didn't hinder you. You know exactly. exactly. <laughs> I exactly. love this stuff, though. I love stunts. I love the intricacies that people don't know. You know, what I mean? it's like, oh, they just fell. It's like, no, 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 no. 
Like I, I started training in the Ido like three, almost four months ago. And oh, yeah, yeah. it's so funny because when I went into it, it's like, I've always wanted to learn to use a sword. It's just a, a thing of mine. So just drawing the sword in that first cut, I was like, yeah, I mean, you're just drawing the sword. I'm like, there's like seven parts to that. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Gee, it took me like two months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. I studied Ken, Kendo and Iaido out here in the Valley oh, cool. as well. Right um, on. And, and yeah, and it's one of those things too, you know, there's a lot of, hmm, for better or for, for worse, I'll say that there's a lot of kids these days who can copy things pretty uh -huh. well. Sure. But at the same time, the people who know, know. Yep. More, when I watch you chamber that sidekick, I know you you haven't done that a thousand times a day. You know, sure. Uh, it's not part of you. you you're you're shortchanging this. You're... Is there's there's a lot of tells obviously um, when you're a martial artist and you look at stuff. Absolutely. Uh, you that like said though, no, exactly. And mm -hmm. and you see that the training was has been in there forever, and the way they readjust themselves to the person they're fighting, yeah. and the way they re adjust themselves to camera too. You know, it's uh, there are tells, and you know every every season of some show, I'll get you know a dancer who comes sure. up to me and is like, I have full control of my body. I am super flexible, super strong. <laughs> um, and I go, okay, uh, you know, grab so and so and put together ten beats for me. I'll be back in ten minutes. Sure. And I'll do it. And then afterwards, I'll say, um, your intention isn't there. You're not really trying to knock his head off. One, right. and two. If I if I can count the beats, then you're not doing it right. Everything oh. should be interruption. You know. So they're used to being on the beat, and I want to be interrupted. I right. want that wind up, bap, you know. Yeah. Uh, it should be off rhythm. It should not be on rhythm. So that would be the hardest thing to untrain. And there's, you know, harder things for martial artists to untrain. You know, I've worked with a lot of guys who they're stacking themselves behind the guy or they're mm -hmm. really close in because they're like, my punch wouldn't get him. It's not my in my range. I'm like, yeah, we want to do take two. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> trust me when I say don't be there. You know, there's a lot of a lot of nuances to it. Sure. Sure. So if you go from like doing things with your friends and kind of figuring it out. When did you kind of make the foray to like, what was your first gig? Do you remember? Ah, so uh, it was 1990, I think. And the movie okay. Mobsters was coming out. Okay. And we made friends with this guy at a video store on the corner out here. Oh, and sweet. We, yeah, you know, it was like, uh, I'd say pre-Blockbuster days, but that kind of feel. Sure. And it was just block he wanted, then. it was just block. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to put on a live show in the parking lot as a way to oh. promote the release of this video for rentals, right? Okay, I'm into that. Yeah, so I put together this little little script and it we had as the cash prize was, you know, coupons from other people in the strip mall. And Perfect. it was totally little, totally tiny thing, right? Sure. Uh, fist fight in the parking lot. Cool. Some blanks. Yeah, so we turned it in him and a couple days later, he's like, hey, why don't you come down and uh, check out the new script? Like the new what? <laughs> <laughs> he opens this drawer and members of this video store are these actors, stuntmen, uh, special effects people. And now this thing has a hundred foot high fall on fire in it, uh, period <laughs> cars, Tommy guns, squibs. And you know, the I'm like, so this, this is the panic attack. I learned it early, good. Uh, he's like, no, no, don't worry, you're still in charge. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so, that's worse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we did it. We put on the show and we basically had like the morning to rehearse it um, with all the people because we couldn't, you know, everybody else was working. You know, we yeah. did our part. They did. They kind of had their ideas, but we got together that morning, sure. talked about what we would do, put it on the afternoon. Uh, it went well. And then uh, the stunt guy asked us, who's been training your fights? Your fights are pretty good, man. And we're like, uh, you know, Magnum P.I., uh, yeah. Simon <laughs> Simon, Hunter. <laughs> I've heard of him. Columbo. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, uh, well, how would you like to meet some of those guys that do that stuff? We're like, what? Dude. So yeah, he kind of took a couple of us under his wing and and uh, showed us the ropes back then, which is really different than it is now. But yeah, um, that was kind of our first foray into it. Me and a couple guys. Wow, how yeah. cool is that? <laughs> Pretty uh, uh, again, wow. location specific, I would say, right? <laughs> yeah, I love that um, though. But, that's yeah. that's the whole thing though. Like I've talked to so many people, and uh, a common denominator I've seen is luck really is preparation meets opportunity. And 100%. like. You had all of that preparation that you've been doing on your own to where when this opportunity showed up, you got lucky, you know? Exactly. No, 100%. Like, so if I just went on uh, to hustle out of nowhere, you know, not knowing anybody, it would take much longer, for sure. Totally. Have, have you, my favorite question to ask uh, stunt people, have you ever been set on fire? 
Yes. How is it? Lots. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's weird because you can hear it. Oh. <laughs> you hear the crackling, you know? Oh, weird. Um, uh, one of the, I mean, for me back in the day, especially one of the phrases they kept telling me was, if you feel heat, it's too late. Oh, no. Like, my my wrist <laughs> no. is warm. Okay, you're burnt. You know, by the time we get to it and, and handle it, you're burnt. Um, sure. Some of the bigger ones where we would have the Pyrex goggles in our in our hood. Oh, okay. Um, s- seeing the orange around you, you're like, man, this isn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is not but supposed I'll, to be happening. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's a, a lot like what all, a lot of the stuff is. You know, that that same stunt show that we did in the parking lot, they they brought, like I said, the hundred foot high fall on fire. Yeah. Uh, they brought an airbag out, and then they brought the crane down after the show. Everybody's clapping, whatever. Like, who wants to jump? <laughs> oh, like looks at me. I'm like, sure. <laughs> What so like you did? First, it? My, yeah, my first fifty footer up there, uh, like ever. And Dude. Uh, it's funny. I look at it now, and you can see I totally like reach down for the bag. Like that makes a difference. <laughs> but in your brain, <laughs> sure. your brain, you're trying to, to convince yourself that it's okay to do this. You know, this is how people die. Right. You know, the, it's so I reached for it. <laughs> Three <laughs> feet of of lunge for the bag did not make a difference at fifty feet. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy! You actually yeah. did it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did uh, and it's yeah i was wearing like these neon green short or pants from the 90s it was crazy. perfect crazy perfect. time yeah those need to come um, back <laughs> those need to come back <laughs> but yeah it's funny the last the last burn i did uh you always have a good you want to have a good team you want to have guys who can see the signs who know when to come in who when they hit the extinguisher they don't spend 10 minutes on your face because the way the sure. extinguisher works it just takes all the oxygen away so you can't inhale the whole time they're Oh, putting you out in your face good point uh, you know they usually start there and push down towards your feet you know right um, but <laughs> the guys i had and i i kept having to back them off because they were like lay down i'm like i'm not done <laughs> <laughs> i'm not i'm like, not cooked yet <laughs> i i have a pistol in my hand i bounce off a trash can i fire a few times i take a couple of hits before i finally go down um and <laughs> it, from the bts of of the of the shoot they're, they're like like five feet behind me with the extinguishers chasing me in, chasing me out, following me. In. Like, <laughs> I'm like, back off. <laughs> I'm trying to work here. <laughs> yeah. When I lay down, you come get me. Um, That's right. Thing, so. You save yeah. me when I'm dead. We talked about this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, That's amazing. So was, was stunts always like movies and whatever you can do? That was the goal? Because you did it because you loved it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I, I was definitely... Let's see. I think I was twelve when my friend's dad took us to the big brawl with Jackie Chan. Oh, and that was the f- that's first it. Hong Kong. Yeah, the first, and I was hooked. Yeah, you know? and I, I didn't realize it at the time, but I had a really critical eye for timing and discerning when things were sped up or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, yeah. so when we tried to do some of the stuff, we're like, "Why does this not look like that? We're doing exactly the same thing. We're throwing." <laughs> I'm like, "He's falling faster than we are." <laughs> right yeah just <laughs> just a hair but sure. there's there's no way we can do that they must be doing something so um that yeah, definitely hong kong stuff inspired me um of course i i thought all those guys died in those wrecks because <laughs> they did they're all clones jackie chan's yeah, exactly. team is actually a clone factory they just pop them out there's like eight v yeah. trans walking around <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's funny i got to i got to fly jackie uh on chinese zodiac no way and it was cool to meet, uh, you know, his his team and and work with them and stuff. But at the same time, I was like, man, this is the dude. Yeah. You know, it's it's the only time I've ever really been starstruck. Not, um, well, rightfully so. Yeah. I, and you know, I, he he had the the he had the uh, what do you call it the paramotor from oh Operation, yeah from from the first one because this was a sequel sure uh, part three or part four or whatever. But he had it. I came around the corner. I was like, <laughs> there it is. You know. And then right then. <laughs> Right then, I see him over sitting at a table making like these meat burritos. He's like, Joe, have a burrito. I'm like, Jackie Chan's feeding me. What's what? going on right now? What? What's happening? <laughs> yeah. You've had a Jackie Chan burrito, Joe? Yeah. You know that it adds so like real. it adds like 150 years to your life, I've heard. Good. I'm going to wear it. I'm just going to yeah. just. Yeah, yeah you're I... good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you're yeah. Still, you still have the burrito. You just take bits of it every year. Yeah. Your birthday. <laughs> It's not smelling so good anymore. I don't know if the potency is... <laughs> Fight through it. Fight through it, Joe. <laughs> I mean, we all know the most dangerous man on the planet is Jackie Chan in a room full of furniture. 
Just facts. Exactly. You better <laughs> nail that stuff down. That's right. <laughs> That'd be a pretty funny practical joke, though. Right, right. <laughs> hey, Jackie Chan yeah. in an Ikea. What? It's a horror movie of itself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and now it must be made that's right we'll figure it out we'll figure it out <laughs> this is our thing now joe we're in this together <laughs> hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> oh, i love yeah. it i love it how, so then how was that when uh when you go and they introduce you to these guys that are like actually doing it from like parking lot brawls to hey come into the group like how cool yeah it was yeah it's surreal <laughs> you know um sure. what's funny is being older and actually growing up in that era, but still being able to kick head level and that kind of stuff. Hell yeah. Um, you know, after having been hit by 20 cars, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's no big deal. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's something that, you know, I what? don't factor that stuff in because most of the time now I'm flying, you know, Mandalorian, I'm flying whoever. Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the pull side of things, not so much the performing side of things as much. Mm -hmm. It's, it's its own beast, but I, tend to not think about those things that I should be, you know, taking into credit uh, as part of what made me get here and yeah. part of my history. Hell yeah. Um, That's what it's all so about. I didn't get to, yeah, I didn't get to do any fighting. It was just the wire guy on that show, mm -hmm. but there was one time when we were kind of messing around and I just saw Jackie, give me that look. He's like, Oh, you're from my time. Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> That's the all burrito. I ever said. <laughs> yes. It's the burrito. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That's awesome. it's is, the, the is that what a stunt rigger is then? Like the, uh, the yeah, I, oh, the wire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cause you've done like, yeah. you've done stunts, you've done like stunt coordinating, you've done like stunt rigging and I don't know what these things are. So rigging's the, you're actually, <laughs> when you're flying Specific, someone, you mean exactly. you're sending them up. Specifically, I've, I've set up the, the, either the hand pull or the ratchet or, you know, oh. it, it, it's, it's not an official category for a credit. Sure. Sure. So I'm still on either a coordinator contract or a utility contract. Uh -huh. But when when you ask, like when you see a movie full of wires or a show full of wires, you ask who the stunt rigger was for that because it right. tends to be one dude who's in who's in charge and brings in a team uh, gotcha. to keep all that together. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Is it is it harder to pull someone up or to catch them when they're down? How does how does this work? Break this down for me. Physics is funky. Like. It, it, <laughs> You feel like you can look at something and and know what it's going to be, but it's it's very tricky. Uh -huh. um, like a lot of the superhero stuff I used to do, like Mighty Med and uh, a lot of these Disney yeah. kids shows, um, yeah. we'd fly them out and fly them back in in the same shot. So the hardest part is you pull down to launch them, right? Uh huh. Then you you ride it up so that when they land, you squeeze a little bit to soften their landing, and then you get off. But you have really? to get off at the top. So you're fall, you're free falling on the rest of that. Oh, so if you flew them, yeah, if you flew them in from eight feet, you're going up eight feet. You're letting them land, and then because if I just hung on to it, they'd start to get dragged back towards the point oh, or lifted. Yeah. You want them to have their feet to do the rest of the scene. So right, uh, riggers tend to get punished quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> but off camera, so you know, a lot of people don't understand what goes into it. Um, right, but we're I had no idea. Doing it, you know. Um, wow. A lot of people think a lot of people think you just throw more bodies on the line and that'll get you a better look. But when you yeah. have four or five minds, it kind of cancels it as well. Sure. So, yeah, I tend to wow. I tend to do air uh, when, whenever possible. When I want that big look, I'll put them on my ratchet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You hit that. wow. I had no idea. So so if there's like rough cuts anywhere, like without the sound, you hear the actor land and then you hear like thunk, 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 of riggers falling in the background. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, and a lot of a lot of like uh, people looking over, seeing the thumbs up, and just continuing with the scene. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. I landed on my keys. Yeah, <laughs> Bill's got metal legs now. He's been doing this for fifty years. <laughs> yeah, but he can jump for twenty feet. It's awesome. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's crazy. I had no idea. It makes sense because you've got a. It's like the seesaw type of thing. One goes up, exactly. goes down. It's yeah. Uh, so that how much does weight come into that as like pairing up the actor with the rigger kind of thing uh weight comes into quite a bit and there's again i'm five four so mm -hmm. i i will throw a backpack or a, a weight vest on if i need to okay uh, cool cool but now i have two or three guys that can coordinate with me uh seamlessly that are that you know make it a lot easier sure sure yeah what a cool gig 
I, I love I love this stuff. Learning about like, oh, here's something you probably didn't know goes into that amazing shot. All these people, I had no clue what rigging was and all that. That's so cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did, so did did you start? You started with performance and stuff like that. When did you move over to like rigging and stuff like that? Uh, it's 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 weird because like I say, rigging isn't an officially recognized category anyway. Sure. So I was there. So let's say after that that show, right? Mm-hmm. That show I put a first live show, uh, meeting all these people. Um, getting to go look at sets and, and uh, hustle other coordinators. Being, again, a five-foot brown guy, I didn't double anybody, per se. Sure. So the effects guys were like, well, we're going to go pipe ramp a car. You want to come on our oh, side? You can sweet. see what goes into it. I'm like, sure. Yeah. I'll build a cage, you know, um, see what goes into that kind of stuff. And uh, Really? I was there pretty much back then in the late 80s, early 90s. Effects guys were still building the rigs. Mm-hmm. And stunt guys were, were just riding them. Gotcha. Okay. So there was a lot of, uh, I don't know, transitional hate. <laughs> I, I guess I kind of <laughs> I kind of saw it from both sides. You know, the, the effects guys, oh, since they had been doing it that whole time, it was weird for them to just let some of that go. Right. But at the same time, for stunt guys who were learning about it and starting to do it themselves, at least there's only one direction to point the finger if something goes wrong. Good point. Good point. You know, so that makes sense. Where I, what I see now, though, is there's still some studios who have it in their really archaic uh, contracts that say that when you're on stage 26 at Paramount, uh, the special effects guys are the only ones up, allowed up in the perms to hang lines or whatever. Gotcha. So, so as the coordinator, you're down at the bottom with the laser pointer going, put one there, put one here, hang this over here. And then when it times to do the stuff, your stunt guys will still run it. Um, oh, okay. So there's still like that interaction that has to be done for whatever legal contractual reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, But for the most part, stunt guys are doing their own ratchets, their own wire, uh, air rams, that kind of stuff now. Sure. But I was there, like I say, for the transition. I learned uh, from a guy who flew Jackie Gleason, uh, Leonard Nimoy, back in the day. Yeah, I learned wire wire from him. So when we get to a place of heat and there's a little conflict with uh, effects guys over who's doing what, you know, I Mm -hmm. can kind of drop names and... I give examples and then I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they give me a little leeway um, when that comes up. So sure. But now, you know, with all the, the last, I got, oh gosh, I want to say 12 to 15 years, I've been doing a lot of stuff for Netflix and Disney. So they kind of just know me as that guy. Totally. Um, every once in a while, a coordinator would be like, Hey, you want to jump in this fight? I'll be like, sure. I'm like, I didn't know you fought too. What? <laughs> so it's You're like, Please. I'll still have, I'll still have some stuff. Uh, to be able to do, but uh, yeah. mostly mostly ND again. You know, sure. Five foot cube, a five foot brown cube, not double. Yeah. A lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Yet they don't they don't understand what you're capable of, Joe. You know yeah. when that Danny DeVito action movie comes out. Yeah. I'm... <laughs> oh, it's on. <laughs> it's on. That's <laughs> right. It, when it comes to like ratchets and like pulls and all these things, like which one of those gags is the most complicated from your side? Uh the complexity usually is dependent on location. Oh, um, oh, that makes sense. You know, it's uh, it's more time for me to hook up air to do a ratchet. Okay. Um, but then the, the actual performance of it is hitting a button. You know. Sure. <laughs> there's a there's times when I need to do on the spot valving depending on what kind of look they want for landings and hitting things and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll have uh, valves that I'll control during the flight. Um, but when it's uh, handful stuff, it's it's a uh, it's a team thing, you know. They really sure they kind of have to know when we're going to act like they're not being on wire. You know, again, we don't want to see the wire. We don't right. want to know that stuff. So there's, there's definitely a lot of timing issues and technique stuff uh, that goes on between the the pull team and the uh, performer for hand uh, stuff. Okay, okay. How how much rehearsal time do you have for these like stunts? It's man, it varies uh, and. It seems like the more money they make, the less time we get. I don't understand. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I try, if it's a complicated gag or if there's, you know, high risk, I try and get at least two or three days prior to have the person in, mm-hmm. to get them in their their exact wardrobe, because that can make a difference. Sure. Um, with their props, whatever they're going to be having, you know, because I think my first high fall on camera, I was doubling a kid and he had a baseball cap and a backpack. But okay. it was only it was only 35, 40 feet. I was totally comfortable. But then when I jumped off the thing and tried to spot the bag, the bill of the cap was kind of obscuring it. Oh, no. So 
in flight, I'm like wrecking and then I smack the hat off and then I could see you and I finish the fall. Um, that's not something you know because you don't practice that. Right. Meanwhile, the director came over and said, oh, look great. The, the hat went this way. You went that way. It was awesome. I was like, that's good. Because I, I, somebody beat my pants. There's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was cool, panic. cool, cool. cool. Yeah. yeah walk awesome. away slowly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, and, and again, you, you default, not what you've you know, taken in the seminars, martial arts especially. You, you don't default to what you've learned or trained last, but what you've really drilled into yourself by rote. You yeah, know? Um, totally. So, you know, same situation falling at, at night. I was doing a live show at uh, Warner Brothers Backlot and there was supposed to be no cameras allowed. And as I jumped off this building, some lady took a picture and oh. it was just wide out. Like I didn't know where the pad was, oh, when to no. tuck. But I kind of, you know, since I'd done that fall a bunch, I was able to kind of mimic what I did and l- luckily landed flat. Oh, uh, um, <laughs> But, you know, those are the things that when you're, especially when you're doing wire, you're not, you don't, you don't understand how that comfort changes for you. Uh, that you want to drill and practice as much as you can before you get to the set. <laughs> sure, um, sure. Yeah, so as much rehearsal as they'll give us is yeah. <laughs> usually the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know on some of the the bigger budget ones, because I work with the same same guys as some of these guys, um, they'll be on for like a month. <laughs> just, Sheesh. just figuring out the gag, just uh, practicing, you know, switching switching parts, trying to figure out who's going to be the better person on it. Like, I don't normally get that luxury, but. Sure, um, sure. It exists. <laughs> okay, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. You, you were also in a movie that uh, I don't know many people that have seen it, but I really liked it. It was um, uh, Grand Theft Parsons. Get the f out. Yeah, dude. Wow, that movie's so heard good. That movie. You it's, know what's funny? It's so good. You know what's funny is uh, that hearse almost killed me. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> that, oh, it was the it was, irony, Joe. We, you're right. Right. <laughs> The casket literally almost killed me. So um, a <laughs> couple things happened. That thing was obviously we we ended up buying it because we were going to paint it that big yellow right. uh, hippie the, paint the job, color. whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, throughout the, sh- the shoot, we'd noticed the engine was starting to skip. So we didn't have time to really fix the engine. We just pulled that plug. So oh, no. <laughs> out of out of eight cylinders, by the end, it was maybe on three, blah, 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 blah. And there's this part where I'm I'm – bombing through the desert they wanted this really like high overhead shot yeah, of yeah. the hearse just going through the desert uh-huh. um, prior to that and it was my mistake uh <laughs> we we had i own all this we had secured the <laughs> casket enough to get around the city uh okay, the casket okay. that was in the back but right. they were heavy uh, uh, yeah. and so i hit this i hit this huge bump and the casket broke free from the straps and pinned me like you know oh, when you make fun no. of people who drive up against the steering wheel yeah like, it pinned me the steering wheel. <laughs> And the only thing I could think of, because it was so heavy, the only thing I could think of was to aim for another bump and hope that bounced it oh. back off me. <laughs> of and <course>. it did. <laughs> so, I would, yeah, exactly. The irony of yeah. you know, stuck Almost... killed by casket in a hearse. In a hearse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that there was is a lot of uh, incredible. There was a lot of in- interesting <laughs> things on that show. <laughs> That is so fun. Imagine, imagine being someone else watching that. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, what's going yeah. on? Is it is that casket attacking that man? <laughs> yeah. Good thing it wasn't like a, a shot through the windshield. You'd have seen all of it. Yeah. But, uh, they were above, so they didn't they didn't really pick up on it. Sure, um, they have no idea. <laughs> but after after a while of me not answering the radio because I couldn't because it hit the passenger floor sure. <laughs> and I was pinned where I was. Uh, I ended up just stopping. I didn't like we called cut. I didn't stopping, and then uh, they had to come get me. <laughs> Four guys had to pull the thing backwards so I could get into. The, yeah, I hope that's the cut that's in the movie, so that any, you know. I wish. I wish there was BTS of that. You know. Yeah. Now we know. If you see that yeah. shot, you're actually actively being assaulted by a by a coffin. <laughs> yeah. We also I punctured that gas tank. There was a, a gag. No. Uh, yeah, there was a gag where we we're supposed to. Um, he gets pulled over. By uh-huh. a cop on a bike. Yep. You know, so I tested the bike. I rode the bike. It's Kawasaki 1000, typical police bike. And uh, I said, "Yeah, hey, that's cool. It's it's it works fine." And the actor who went to go do it, though, he changed his mark. He wanted to to park behind the car, oh, and then okay. like kind of sneak around instead of pulling up next to it. Uh-huh. So we rehearsed it with him pulling up next to it, and then the first take, he pulls up behind it, but you know, camera. So they kind of pass him, but they just track him in. Mm-hmm. And uh, the they did their scene. And it was a uh, it was one of those rolling rolling freezes where basically you swap out 
you know? And so they yeah. just dollied way back and I put the thing in reverse and I looked in my mirror and I didn't see the bike. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> like, go, 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 go. So I went maybe three feet, but I rolled over the bike. <laughs> so I think the kickstand or something punched, punctured the gas, gas tank. So I'm driving away like, cut, get out of the car. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I probably shouldn't be telling you all these things. You know, listen. <laughs> I, I think I think the statute of limitations has passed that. You know. <laughs> you know, I'll say I worked with uh, Robert Forster more than once, and that was the first one I worked dude. with him on. He was just the nicest dude ever. He seemed it. Just Actually, a sweetheart there's of like, guy. There's like stories of him just like being the most generous, coolest person ever. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. That's what you love to hear. I had a good time with all of them. Um, we broke Johnny Knoxville's nose. <laughs> that's okay he does that for free <laughs> in his spare time you know there was a 120 frame uh clip uh floating around when it happened i don't know where it went but i was just like really? oh, there's my there goes my career <laughs> and it was but somebody pulled it down thankfully i don't know who did it um yeah so michael shannon is tackling him uh-huh. and we had pads buried under the ground everything was cool they did it six times perfect wow um but before they did it, I, I kept having to correct them. I told Johnny, first of all, don't catch yourself in a push-up position because your your elbow's gonna be up. Um, oh yeah. And Michael, just bury your head in the small of his back as you tackle him. Don't come out to the side. Mm-hmm. And so they did it, like I said, those five. And then finally the camera guy's like, you know what? Let me drill, let me dig a hole in the ground to put the camera below level and really catch this tackle flight. And I'm oh, like, boy. You sure we don't have it? <laughs> He's like, this is just a bonus. <laughs> this is just a bonus. I'm like, all right. For fun, for fun, for safety. And so and so in their brains, I guess, that time it took for them to reset this shot, they went back, they defaulted back to the dangerous part. Oh, oh boy. So, so you see Johnny Knoxville catching himself in a push-up position. Or sorry, it was Johnny tackling um, Michael. He catches mm-hmm. himself in a push-up position, and then Johnny's face is right above the elbow. Oh. And you see him hit it and then oh. come up, and his elbow is like over here on the left side of his face. Ah! Ah! <laughs> and I'm like, ah. I'm like, we cut. <laughs> like, let's cut. And then... uh. <laughs> Everybody runs over to John. He's like, "Ah, oh, man, this happens all. It's all right." And he just pushed it back into place with some. Just yeah, yeah. Like it just happens. I'm like, man, I can't tell you how many times. Like, it was cool about it. Luckily, <laughs> I was just like, "Oh, great! I broke Johnny's nose." That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, you know, you're the only other person other than himself that's done it. So well done. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. On on the one more extra take for safety. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that means something different now. <laughs> I hate when they say that. <laughs> One more for safety. Is it though? That arguably that was for not safety. You yeah. know? Hundred <laughs> percent. Yep. <laughs> I, I I also love talking to stunt people in that same vein of like you wouldn't expect stunts to be involved in this. Uh but you worked on Ned's Declassified, which I did. Lauren Mary Kim also did. Different did. episode. But it's Different funny episode, like yeah. all right, these incredible stunt people. Are on the Nickelodeon show that you know, and you're like, "All right, yeah, that's cool." Small, small world, man. It's, as I went through a bunch of those podcasts, I was like, "Gosh, dang, what a small world!" And it's, it's yeah. funny because I've always considered myself fringe guy, yeah, fringe guy until recently, you know. Sure. But sure. at the same time, people who I haven't worked with will still know somebody I've worked with, yeah, you know, and, I, and they'll or they'll have, they'll have stories that I, I don't even think got out, but they'll know things, <laughs> right, right, for legal yeah. reasons and otherwise. We can't bring those up, but I understand <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly it is funny how small it is and like is the stunt community as well like it's such a small pond like so many people yeah. like you know tj and then like you've worked in video games so i imagine oh yeah that you've worked with darren ross who's i like, worked with darren on on like i think the one that that really still kind of gets me fan fan ishmael yeah um when darren and and uh i did uh knights of the old republic oh um, yeah the cinematic trailers for that yeah, uh, beautiful work. When those came out, they're like, "Why aren't the movies like this?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I well, mean, they're that. They're so good. I had a good time doing that. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And Darren's like one of my favorite people ever. He's so cool. He's so chill. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, and it was really weird when I first uh, when I did the first season of Mandalorian. Two of the places we went to, uh, production office was in the old House of Moves. Mm-hmm. which I didn't realize until I looked up and saw one of my anchors in the beams up, up top. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, what is this place? And I'm like, oh, this is the old house of moves. I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah. So I, <laughs> and then they had uh, taken over another place. Um, 
for an extra rehearsal space and to hold props and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was in there, you know, setting up a rehearsal space. And I look up and there's another one acres. I'm like, what was this place? They're like, this was the new house moves. They moved again. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was weird that I was working on a Star Wars production from, you know, I did Knights of the Republic, Force Unleashed, yeah. and a, a few other ones. And I, it was just weird to see other things that kind of, you know, synchronicities, I guess. Sure. Um, and, and your mark's still there. Yeah, and it's, oh, it was still up there. Yeah, <laughs> Joe was here. That's yep, right. I might as well have been. Exactly. Do you, do you, when you're doing like stunts and rigging and stuff like that, versus like movies to shows to like video games, do you? Yeah. Is there a different process for each one? Like how you uh, do every, it? even movie to movie or mocap to mocap, it's different. Really? Um, yeah, I'll say that that the um, obviously when we did the stuff at House of Moves, they had a trust structure dedicated to cameras, right? Mm-hmm. And it was bolted into the ground. So oh, like you okay. couldn't lean on it. You couldn't, you couldn't, you know, touch it. Basically, you'd have to reset all the cameras. Sure. Um, which was fine. So I would pick off the actual structure of the, the building, the ceiling, the beams that were up there. Smart. So no interference, right? Sure. On on Mandalorian, when they first brought in that LED volume, yeah. The, they wanted to do a bunch of wire in there. And I was like, you guys, anything I touch is gonna bump something like <laughs> like what do we do so we had to re kind of structure it from the get-go uh look we had like two or three weeks of pre to do this but i had to basically move, move the catwalk up a little bit make it more independent of their structure and then guy that off to the to the stage itself sure so so that i could i could anchor to that but drop in through one of the panels and not touch and it was tricky <laughs> i bet i bet yeah and, uh, you know, I, I've gone from that to the first day out there in, um, in Norway. They're like, yeah, we want to do some wire there. I'm like, you want me to hook onto clouds? I don't, I don't there's, <laughs> there's literally no, nothing up here. And I was like, can you get a crane out here? They're like, no, because uh, it'll fall on the lake on the way up. Wow. Like, All right. So here's what we can do. I had six guys sit on a snowmobile. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> I, tied, I, tied a, I tied a wire to the biggest guy named Magnus. And I told him <laughs> that he should just run. And he's like, he, he, he's wearing the vest. He's tugging on the wire. He's like, I don't, I don't think my feet come up. I'm like, man, let's just run. Yeah. And so first take, he ran full out, full on taco, landed on his shoulders. I was like, that'll, that'll teach him. They said, they said, cut. He goes, my feet come up. I'm like, yes, it did. He's like, I go faster next time. I'm like, what? Like these guys, you know. Sure. They, you know, and, and when I brought Arams out there, one of the guys hit one the first time he was going to try it after watching a bunch of guys, he hit it sideways and did a side semi off. And I'm like, that's, oh, I mean, clearly you're fine, but that's not something even stunt guys would try and do. Like, right. Yeah. That's, yeah. But I'm he didn't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't know that to know it, you know, like, sure. You, know, you don't know. Um, so, yeah, every every situation seems like a clean slate ish, you know. Sure. I've seen enough and I've done enough that I can. I'm usually pretty, pretty hundred percent on from my first setup, but there'll be times when, you know, they'll move a mark or they'll move some sort of dressing and I got to move the, the point I had up over. Sure. Um, so yeah, it experience helps when you're, when you're redoing or first doing uh, setups for wire. I bet. I bet. Yeah. That's so cool though. It's like a, it's like a, when you walk into a room, there's like a math equation. You got to figure out like, okay, this is here, blah, blah, blah. And it's all, so how does this work? You've got the performer, they're wearing their sort of vest thing that's attached to wires that is anchored to something above them, and then the people on the other side. Uh, yeah, usually a minimum of two pulleys above. So, if they're oh, okay, if they're like say directly under a pulley, right? Uh huh. We pull them up. We we pull on the other side, coming off of another pulley. They go straight up and down. Got it. So if you if you pick that pulley and come down straight down from it on the ground, you can pretty much draw an asterisk, right? Sure. So if they go five steps to the right mm-hmm. and we hammer them from our side they'll probably go past the middle to about four to five steps on the left got it physics right? so that's exactly it's the it's uh-huh. the pendulum kind of deal of it so sure um, there is a happy a happy medium of them being ready for us to pull and the way that we come <laughs> off <laughs> the way that we come off the ladder got right it. so anytime you see somebody like twisting like mm-hmm. what we call a wrap where we physically just okay. wrap the the cable or the wire around them. Sure. Um, that adds a lot more height to our end. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So 
uh, what's called a gooch, let's say, where we we mm -hmm. anchor, we we have the shackle connected to the vest, and then we literally go around their crotch and then back up to the pulley. Uh -huh. So they're either they're either going to do a really wacky front flip or a back like a gainer. Uh -huh. um, where we would normally have pulled them, say, you know, eight, eighth step up on the ladder. Now we're up on the twelfth or thirteenth because the uh, oh. distance to go around their torso through the crotch back up is you know five feet. Oh right, good point. So wow. yeah, so we're we're That's coming off from a lot higher. Yeah, <laughs> That's a lot yeah. to do. <laughs> but what that gives us is, if we so what I do is I usually set that endpoint where they're going to land. Mm -hmm. I make sure that that's about where I am standing chest level. Oh, so then, okay. So then we wind them up in the wire. Mm -hmm. I see where my ascenders on the rope have gone to on the ladder. And I'm like, wow, that's that's uh, 15 steps up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but what that does is it gives me control over their landing. So uh, gotcha. there's a there's a clip out there, I think, where it looked it looks like the guy kind of has his arm funky mm -hmm. uh, right before he hits. And it's just out of the corner of my eye. So I kind of hung on to him a hair longer and then set him down because um, sure. I didn't want him to, you know, have his arm get jammed. Uh, that's nice of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, he he was mad. He was like, I, my arm would have caved. I, I had that. I was like, well, yeah, you know, in the middle of falling down, jumping off this ladder and seeing that in the corner of my eye, I erred on the side of, you know, I'd rather get you more onto your back Smart. before I let you, before I dumped him. So sure. when you're rotating at that speed with a wrap, um, sure. you know, you look, you can, if you're not careful, especially going forward, you can totally scorpion, you know, somebody's. Sheesh torso can be going into the ground and the legs are still continuing to whip yeah um, oh, so no. yeah so that's why i like to have that break ability i usually Smart. can't tell that i'm breaking at all mm -hmm. um but that's in the good shots you know i the guy right. looks like he just <laughs> went totally cool. forward and, and pancaked yeah yeah <laughs> um, but if something goes funky or if he's a little he helped us a little quote unquote helped us sure uh, um which made him over rotate basically, then I can still at least put the brakes on him and, you know, not let him break his neck <laughs> squat, okay. or anything like that. So okay. there's obviously we practice, you know, and we, sure. we try and use pads uh, for rehearsals mm -hmm. and then save it, save the wreck for the on yeah. camera bit. <laughs> fair. You know. Fair. Yeah. That's cool. I didn't, I also didn't think about that yet. A ladder, obviously. How big are your ladders? Mm -hmm. I got some pretty big ladders. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I'll, I don't want to brag. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I'll call. I'll call for a scissor lift when I need it. You know what I mean. Oh so, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. What What do you use if you're like on location and you're outside? Like you mentioned a crane. You do. Is that a common thing you yeah. use? Yeah. Yeah. We we really? use uh we use cranes a lot. That's cool. You know, um, the the bigger the crane, usually the better flexibility wise we can we have to make the shot look right. But the more oh, expensive, yeah. obviously, that is. You know. Sure. They can um, move around as far as more. as far as yeah, pushing the base of the crane off set. Oh yeah. So, oh, smart. You know, a lot of a uh, a lot of construction type cranes. They're like, yeah, we have fifty foot reach, but that's starting from the back of the crane going straight out, uh, straight up. So, if I wanted sure. to use fifty foot of that, I'm standing on the crane. Right. <laughs> There's no. <laughs> so to so to really come down, have it you know be more like twenty twenty five feet off the ground at the point that I need it to be, the crane can back up a little bit now and be out of shot as much as possible. Um, sure. You know, I try to. I try to put the base where the camera is going to be. It's usually the safest, um, but depending on shadows, depending on you know all kinds of stuff, we got to we got to fudge a bit. Right, right. Yeah. So they probably bring you in pretty early on the production side of it to try and figure out how best to do this stuff. Ideally, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> it's funny because like there's still I don't know a lot of these lifetime NDAs kind of crack me up because they'll not give me the script until we're almost in it. And then they'll be like, how many crane days do you see? I'm like, I don't have any idea, man. I haven't seen the script. <laughs> Good. So, you passed your first test. Check. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so five. That's right. Yeah, five. Let's okay, sure. <laughs> start with five until I get in there. Let's see what happens. That feels like a good yeah. place to be. You, yeah. you also, <laughs> I did not realize how many of your things I'd seen and loved until I started like looking into things and like, you oh no! Some of the coolest fan films like ever. You did like the Wonder Woman uh, one, the the Uncharted yep. one, easily yep. one of the best yep. ever made. How cool and is that, dude? That that guy, <laughs> right? Jillian is such such an awesome dude to work with. 
Oh, I bet. Big hero of mine. And he, and he right. cared so much about the project, you know? Yeah, I bet. And that, that always helps us as we're designing stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is there something that actors bring that make your life easier? Usually, yes. Yeah. Usually, yes. Um, if they're honest about injuries or abilities, oh. we can work around it. Sure. You know, but sometimes, you know, for ego or whatever reason, they'll not tell us mm-hmm. stuff. And then we'll get there on the day and, and we're like, he's got two left feet and two left thumbs. We're not going <laughs> to, how do we do this? Right. You know, um, so, yeah, the more honest they are, and the more passionate they are, the, it just rubs off on us. You know, we love it. I bet. And he was like the yeah. guy for Nathan Drake that everyone was like, this is this. The, look at, just look at him. Just look at his face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's Nathan, it's Nathan. It's Nathan <laughs> Fillion. Come on, guys. We're all, we're all agreed here on this one. That was yeah. cool. And I, so I, some of the some of the choreography he'd actually pitch in too. Like we showed him oh, cool. uh, our versions of what the fight would be and, and some of the stuff. And he's like, would it be funny if I did this? And he'd do it and be like, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> let's make that that, you know. Um, sure. I love that one. And so many homages yeah. to the game. Like even the way it was shot was like, you were playing the game from the third person, so right? Cool. Well, when we were designing that, that was that was tricky as heck. I bet. We were gonna Texas. We were gonna Texas switch it at first to have the guy oh, really? land, have the stunt guy land out of the window, sure, and have Nathan get up. Um, but it's too too tricky because you know, obviously, you got you gotta have that focal length, you gotta have that depth right mm-hmm. uh, to include the bad guy shooting at him as well as the car pulling up, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, we ended up taking it quite a few tries actually. I bet. It, yeah. Is there something like thinking back on like a, a gag or a stunt that you pulled that was like really complicated? You're like, God, this one right here, I remember. And I, we, uh, I'll tell you what we, you know what, what sucks is there's a lot that don't make it. Um, oh, good point. That, that uncharted exit out the window was going to be him out the window, uh, sliding down the tiles, landing oh. on. Landing, you know, like in the game, I think they do that a lot, where he actually slides off, yep. plants on something else, and then and then falls to the ground clumsily. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But it was it was time, and it was uh, a little bit budget that we couldn't get up and actually pull that off, so that became the alternative, just coming straight out the window. Sure. Um, but as far as like, I've, there's I've been around a uh, a lot of near misses. I, luckily for me, nobody's been injured on my set. Well, that's um, good. It's an important but, uh, one to be able to say. Yeah, I mean, back in the 80s, there was this guy who uh, was notorious for just, if you were told to take the pipe ramp at 55, he'd go at like 70. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and uh, we were doing this pipe ramp, and it was Mulholland Drive, which has a big bend at the end of it where we were doing it, mm-hmm. and uh, he almost went off the end. He almost Sheesh. just barely, like in a movie, like just the side of the Suburban kind of just dug in finally at the last second. <laughs> uh, and we were waiting for the thumbs up, but he was knocked out. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do not take responsibility for this specifically, just yeah. so everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man, um, that's nuts. Hmm. So, how did you become involved with the Mandalorian then? Um, gosh, it, it's funny. I think it was word of mouth, pretty much stuff. You know, and, and that's a common there story. Was, there was so much Marvel stuff going on that a lot of the other big guys were busy. Yeah. You know? get in yeah. there that's yeah. the way to go that that small community again and how hush yeah. hush season one was a lot of people that i've talked to that have worked on it same sort of thing was like i knew someone that worked on it and it was like hey come here we're not telling anyone what we're doing you know it's like yeah. secrecy so oh, yeah. makes sense yeah makes yeah sense. yeah and then, you know that again lifetime nda on yeah. every contract. <laughs> right <laughs> so. that's right yeah. so we had a uh, we had uh one of our guys trying to post previs is for a minute and uh disney legal actually contacted him to pull it down Ooh. way after the way after the airing of it you know? sure that's so, yeah. that's one of those there's actually uh i happen to know there's a sniper assigned to every crew member i don't know if you knew yeah. that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that laser light it, it shows up it just blinks long enough to be like did it no no that, yeah. that isn't it yeah <laughs> yeah you know and uh it gives you a bell kick and then a, a coma yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a very interesting dart. <laughs> Listen, you signed it, all right? <laughs> it's yeah. on you. <laughs> yep. Is it is it intimidating working on something of like that size? It's a big uh, deal. Or do you, you can't really be, contextualize it? I think it would be if I was younger. Yeah, um, that makes sense. You know, uh, there's too much to be responsible for and to uh, mm-hmm. 
just make sure your ducks are in a row for, you know, because, you know, again, Favreau knows what the hell he's doing and he, sure. he knows what he wants, which again helps us a lot. But at the same time, I want to I want to equate it in the positive ways mm-hmm. to be like Bay and the other dude. Uh, sure, but sure. When they've done every department themselves and you estimate them a time and they kind of right. know whether that's a bullshit number or not. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, you just stop trying to overestimate you, you know you, tr- you really try and you really try and take out the padding if you can and and dial in your shit <laughs> yeah it's it's totally. uh it's it it's funny because for me when i grew up and were on other sets of other people doing stuff in my head i don't know if i was arrogant or just learning but i would be like that shouldn't take that long you know sure but they sure. were wise to, to do it uh because there would be some weird factor or some other thing that was out of their control that would jump up and mm. it would end up taking close to that long. So I kind of took that mentality, you know, it's air on the side of safe uh, always. Right. And so if I, if I say it's going to take me an hour and I get it done in 40, then yay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's always yeah. better to, 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 to like, when are you going to be home in an hour, show up at 45, then say an hour and an hour and a half. Always. Yeah. I'm married. Yeah. I know how this works. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Do you, um, do you have, do you have a favorite episode you've worked on so far? Because you worked on all of them. Uh, yeah. Um, it's funny. I like the way uh, Ahsoka meeting Mando worked out. Yeah, same. And and Ahsoka versus Diana. She was so cool. Agreed. Yeah, she she just you know in the lineage she comes from you know. Right. Awesome. Yeah, the um, homages to old school Kurosawa in that episode. Beautiful. Well, here's the here's the thing. Before we even shot any fights, before we uh. uh were okayed on the first gosh i want to say it was the trandoshans in the cave fight that was like the first real big uh-huh. fight we had um dave filoni had to sit down with us and he was like look i know there are shows out there where the heroes get beat down a hundred times and jump right back up and he's like i don't want that to be our guy really That's not the aesthetic yeah sure. he's like, i don't want that aesthetic i want it to be a guy a little bit like Indy, where he yeah. could fight but he won more by just sheer luck or persistence or something. Sure. Um, <laughs> just by not giving up. <laughs> yeah. And, and he won that way. Like that's how he kind of saw Mando. And he's like, and here's the thing too, about when we started doing lightsaber stuff back in the day when he was growing up, which is the same as when I was growing up pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, we appreciate, we have both appreciated traditional like Zatoichi. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Love it. When you when when he pulled the sword out, people jumped the hell back just on the draw. Yeah, because they're like, that's the thing that kills people. We yep. shouldn't be in that range, uh-huh. right? As <laughs> yep. opposed as opposed to you know, person pulls out a sword, the other guy like just takes a boxing stance. Let's go, right? Yeah, <laughs> like it's like I'll sure. cut you, man. <laughs> I have a three foot razor. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, and it, you'd be happy if I was able to cut off your your head in the first cut, but it's gonna just be a lot of bleeding before that. That's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> And he said, it's kind of like, we're going to have to retrain audiences in that sense. Sure. You know? So uh, Ryan Watson, the other coordinator, big Kung Fu background. So cool. Great dude. Awesome guy. Just totally. And then I had, like I said, the Kendo, the Aido, traditional Japanese stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I was a big fan of, like I said, Zato. And uh, of course, his brother in Lone Wolf and Cub. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I was, you know, that was what I wanted. I wanted to just be the guy who beat the other dude to the draw. Or, yeah. You know, beautiful. I can't tell you how many times I got coached on people when they were still trying to get, you know, raise yeah. me up. Um, You're already in. <laughs> I was like, coach it. That's um, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I understood what Dave was saying. And I think when he took the time to shoot it the way he wanted to shoot it, and especially with the parallels, you know, yeah. Um, even though it wasn't like, again, 75 move choreo, mm-hmm. uh, you still felt the intention. You felt the, the, the tension of what was in, on the line you know sure um i think it worked out great that was that was a that was a fun one to to, to work on probably my favorite yeah i did not like uh i did not like working in the led that day <laughs> uh, i was i was having i was having trouble running lines for my my wire and stuff for the part where she goes up and over the branch yeah and, yeah and where he he gets pulled up and then falls down there was there were that and then her up on the uh on the rooftop uh Oh yeah, yeah. That those two bits, uh, 
ended up having just issues on the days. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, those were the two hardest, but that, I guess that also helped endear me to that app. Uh, sure. Overall, when I finally saw the cut. So yeah, I'd both. still say that was my favorite. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's like your favorite and most difficult are the same thing. And that's what kind of, Yep. that makes sense. That's usually how it is though, isn't it? It's like, you got to so. take the good with the bad and that. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It when you're doing stunt rigging, I'm curious, is there like because you said every gig's different, right? Is there yep. a common hurdle that is like ah, this again? Like it keeps coming up, it's a thing you constantly have to overcome. Usually it's uh like I like that example I gave with, with Norway where they just expect you to show up and, and magic's gonna happen. Oh yeah. You know? like, <laughs> Other people not understanding uh, what the what you do on set yeah yeah they're like i don't need to think about physics i'm gonna have the guy come in that thinks about physics <laughs> and i'm gonna come in and be like i don't have anything to attach to like sure dude, just clouds <laughs> um but yeah i think sense. that uh i think that my i guess routine i guess would be uh, uh -huh. when i when i get to location either to scout or to set up uh Smart. it's pretty dialed you know it's pretty Smart. dialed um so that the 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 flow chart has fewer fewer ways to go sure now than when i when i first started and it was just like you know ah, i don't want to need my daddy right yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the the benefit of experience though because you yes. have because you've been through all these things you have that math checked out it's like a carpenter cutting yeah. something you're like oh it's just like that like now for the first few years it wasn't <laughs> as no exactly as uh <laughs> as our stunt pa on a, a western i just did in Santa Fe said, she's like, you're, you're an Asian, not a Bijan. <laughs> okay. Yes. I like, I like I'll mapping it. it out. In other sure. words, I, I, I do enjoy that part. And I encourage the guys I bring on or who are assigned to me uh, to throw up their ideas, you know, and then I'll, I'll try and shoot them straight on what's, what's right and what's not. Sure. That. that makes sense. Yeah. Is, is there a gig that you think back on, like in general, that was complicated? Because you you've got physics involved, you've got rigging, you got things like. Is there like one that sticks in like this took this not took a while to crack? Uh, hmm. I know, right? I get you comfortable and then ask you the real questions. Well, no, I mean, there's kind of one the the one I just did most recently kind of sticks in mind, but I don't want to mention anything about. Sure. It <laughs> yeah, that's um, fair. Number two, then. But I guess <laughs> um, yeah, number two. Uh, I think it was Terminator Dark Fate. Oh uh, yeah. The shoots out here in LA, we were in the cargo area of the, the plane and it's, it's like stabilizing, but then zero gravity, but then stable, you know, it's doing, oh, yeah. and so we have to, and it was, uh, Mackenzie versus the girl and Linda Hamilton sliding along the floor, trying to grab her shotgun, all these things at once. And the puppeteering of that was kind of tricky. Um, I bet. And it, it's, you know, if you picture just, a body with six lines coming off it anywhere you want to say and six different people oh, have yeah. to give or pull or you know we have to feel each other on um, yeah that one was pretty technical i guess hand pull wise puppeteering wise that one was uh -huh. pretty hard um wow. yeah uh other than that the the normal tricky ones for me are getting vehicles to do what i need them to do um <laughs> without puncturing the gas check, tank without that yeah well that's the funny thing usually on a on a film that you know that you're going to destroy a vehicle, the gas tank is not even allowed to come with the car. Oh, like it gets, <laughs> that's it, cool. It gets, it gets taken off at the shop. Smart. Smart. You know, and there's usually a, a, some sort of modified fuel cell that, uh, that goes oh, with the car cool. to, I didn't know to that. the location. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I've been on shoots back in the day where they're like, crap, I uh, just filled the tank with soapy water. You know, like <laughs> they, sure. Yeah, there's been some, so, you know, that won't explode. True. Right. <laughs> right. You get creative. But, yeah, yeah. I never would have thought about that. What What's the most amount of lines you've had attached to a person before? Hmm. I think six. I think six was the one. That's so many. That's, that, that's, that's so, so many. many. <laughs> I mean, and this was before, before uh, I want to say wire removal was as ubiquitous, you know, like now it seems like everybody and their mother can take wires out. But yeah. <laughs> back in the day, it was frame by frame, you know, right <laughs> so oh, yeah we had man. we had six on that person that it was similar to a uh, crashing tiger, tiger hidden dragon thing where they you know they're mm -hmm. mid jump and they get skewered sure know? and then 
they still try and fight it and then get flung around a bit while they're up there. Um, right. So yeah, it's it, it can be tricky, you know. Sure. I got invited to work on the Matrix, but it was uh, oh, what just after I got married, and I was yeah, I, you know, I didn't know I didn't know what it was gonna be. Sure. But I was like, uh, you know, I can't leave right now and fly to Australia. I gotta I gotta do these jobs I have here. Uh -huh. Um, you know, but uh. It's funny because before the Matrix, I couldn't pitch wire to anybody. They they only thought of that like rectangular up, across, down, uh, Hong oh, Kong, yeah. of the sixties style. They're like, no, nah, we don't want wire. Yeah. After the Matrix, <laughs> it was like, guy gets punched to the ground and rolls up the bookcase. I'm like, rolls up the bookcase? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and everything was wire. You know? sure. <laughs> A pendulum swung the other way and busted the needle. You know, like. <laughs> it's right. It's right. So. That's why I love Into the Badlands so much beautiful mm. wire work and that was jack yeah, yeah. stunt team all up all up on it so cool yeah yeah uh my buddy morgan uh works on that a lot so cool so cool yeah i get it is so when you got wire work it's still a physical person being thrown all over the place how often do people get the wind knocked out of them oh there are some gags where you know it's just gonna happen right uh Ratchet that goes for getting your <laughs> yes that goes for getting your bell rung too you know sure um, uh it's it's been minimized a lot more i want to say these days because uh we can hide dents we can put foam on a lot of hard surfaces that you don't normally you wouldn't normally have been able to before uh uh -huh. because they can they can smooth it out in, in post gotcha um, so yeah you don't get okay. you don't get hit as hard usually these days sure uh, but i mean there's still some guys that, that want that <laughs> of, co of course of course but uh and and we want it to look as real as possible always. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, there's there's the thing about wire, especially ratchets. And again, I'm using pneumatics to force multiply a lot more than what people could do online. You know, sure. Again, it's like I'm, I'm forcing a, a cylinder, a rod to push or pull uh, you way faster than we could have managed with any amount of people. You know, right. It's just, instant and yeah. <laughs> i gotta plan i gotta plan the landing <laughs> sometimes right. we're throwing sometimes we're throwing you into objects sometimes we're throwing you just into the ground um sometimes i can desail a little bit and, and you won't be able to tell uh a lot of times it's if it's optimum we'll take you out of the, the frame you know so we can be oh, smart. Well, just beside that landing you know sure um, when you want somebody to to get snatched out of frame but the, or in the shot gets snatched and hit the ground and tumble 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 uh you can't have wires on they just get tangled up in the wire oh yeah so so we'll snatch them and then on the b side of that they'll usually run and either hit an air ram or a mini trap and just chuck themselves at the ground as hard as they can <laughs> and uh yeah they're made of something else they're made of something yep. else all yeah, metal and, bones and when, in, inevitably wherever you put your pads the gap that one <laughs> millimeter gap <laughs> Between them is where the bruise is going to get. Yep, yep. That's um, funny. I, I never thought about but, padding the surface you land on. That's very smart. It's very smart. Sometimes we get to. Sometimes we get to. Sometimes uh, there's no way. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes you'll have that uh, big square fluff of, of landing area around the person, you know, yeah. when you really give it away. Uh -huh. um, so we try to avoid that. Um, I remember once I had to do this uh, spiral uh, stair fall backwards. Oh, and it was a, a pretty, pretty tight spiral. And I was like, eh, I don't, mm, all right, I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and I was so focused on the, the spiral fall that I wasn't worried about what initiates me. And there's basically, uh, the actress picks up a vase and smashes it over my head as I'm coming up. Uh huh. So we had our stunt double, uh, Nancy from, uh, over her shoulder looking at me and I did the stair fall fine, like four times. Uh, then we swapped Sheesh. in, we swapped in the actress. And we gave her the notes. The notes with breakaways is, look, you're, you're going to grab it too hard initially if mm -hmm. you're not careful, and you're going to break it in your hands. Um, Fair. These are, break, these are breakaways. They're meant to break. So mm -hmm. you kind of got to pick it up diligently while still looking aggressive, and you're, you know, the rest of you. <laughs> right, right. Raise, raise, raise it up over your head and smash it right here on the hard part of my head, right yep. on the bowling ball. Uh-huh. Not the forehead, yeah. not the eye. Ah. It, it's, it's, it's right here. Yep. <laughs> and and so of course I'm looking at the back of her as I come up the stairs and I hear crunch. 
And she <laughs> she literally panicked and turned around and just threw it right in my face. <laughs> and so and so it blows up in my face. Oh, no. uh, I can't I can't see. I do this stair fall down the spiral thing backwards. Oh, no. I'm just trying to s- suck my limbs in so I don't you know wedge an arm in there sure. or a leg. And then I get to the bottom and they cut. And I'm like, I can't open my eyes. <laughs> like, oh, don't <laughs> your 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 eyes and your ear are bleeding. So, oh just, no, <laughs> yeah, from from the wake, breakaway being just <laughs> just launched into my face, point blank. <laughs> Stunts. <laughs> Stunts. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. This, things things you learn. Blood doesn't taste minty. Yeah. No. Yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> This is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I um, I remember I was the first time I ever like breakaways are really cool. Uh, yeah. I was in I was in a short film a few years ago and we had to do this thing where I was like being held. I got thrown onto a bar and then I'm laying back and I grab a beer bottle and smash it over the guy's head. And what none of us thought about was if somebody's over you and you smash it above their head, those pieces gonna get, get all the shards. <laughs> yeah. Are gonna come to your face. <laughs> yep so yeah learn that one <laughs> yep things you don't yep, know till you know true. till you know <laughs> gravity it's a thing yep. yeah it's a thing <laughs> <laughs> so is momentum and inertia uh-huh and yeah, uh-huh you, you got to taste all of it <laughs> yep yeah yeah is there uh, is there something you haven't done yet that you want to do hmm. uh let's see i have like two second unit directing credits so i'm I love As it. I get older, I, I'm moving more into that. How cool! Uh, you like unit, it? First unit directing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's again, different. it's it's different, and uh, it, it's okay in that even when I was doing wire and we had separate units, and I would have to basically run over and set up, and then pretty much delegate and let go, let God kind of handle sure. it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I I feel like that's even more so in directing because you have to trust the team around you. Yeah, you can't. You'll never get done if you try and do every department yourself and and be Good super point. critical on every. You know, so that that learning curve is, is tricky. Um, I bet. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm. I guess I'm calling that the next chapter. But at the same time, hell yeah, I still love doing the math of what I'm doing. So. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, fringe guy for basically thirty years. Uh, now right. just starting to do mainstream stuff a little bit. How cool! Yeah, so, I love yeah. that. I love that. That's gonna be cool. Do, so, do you have, do you have any advice for someone who either wants to do rigging or any of the things that you've been doing? Uh, yeah, it's tricky. Um, you know, and I, again, I've taught seminars uh, all over the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody, even riggers, everybody should have a good uh, picture fighting base. Uh, uh, yep, smart. You know, uh, whether you're gymnasts. Uh, you're in gymnastics or parkour or a driver um inevitably somebody's going to see your sizes and your look and be like he can double my guy right and they'll throw you in a fight situation and uh, i know drivers who've been kind of called out on it i know people who have told people they're martial artists and then you meet them and you're like mm. yeah you got to be honest about what you do and then you got to really research and and fill up your your fight on camera uh game Smart. Uh, and again, that goes to the first thing we were talking about, you know, shoot and cut yourself and friends uh, yeah. doing stuff. You know, sure. that's easy, easily the most self-critical you're going to be. Um, it, it's great because when I went to uh, Italy and uh, I want to say <sighs> Iceland, I guess, I, I oh, ran into some guys who had some experience and were kind of cocky, you know, and uh, <laughs> at the end of the five-day, seven-day seminar or whatever it's going to be i always tell them you know bring bring nice clothes for pictures uh Mm -hmm. so that we can take a group picture at the end and uh uh, let's do some fights and you know when you show up to when you show up to train they're in sweats and you know Mm -hmm. socks and kung fu shoes on mats and all that stuff sure and i'll that last day i'll just throw every curveball that normally (laughs) happens to all of us i'll be like okay um you guys got it you're you know just 10 beats whatever it is you guys got down good switch parts yeah five minutes the, <laughs> the director likes you better in that part so switch sure okay good and then i'll go in and make them change one move and they have to rearrange stuff for that and then i'll go in and add two words of dialogue from one side 
uh, and then we'll go outside and do this on a hill. But yeah. <laughs> they, and I'll tell them to put on their picture clothes because that's what their actor would be wearing. Oh, good not point. Sweats. So ah, I love there's that. a lot of there's a lot of ways to to really enhance the training that you're already doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, by challenging yourself like that. I can't sure. many dudes try to try to throw a spin back in dress shoes and get inverted splits. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, even though yeah. I told the girls, I I told the girls to bring spanks or whatever to wear under dresses and shirts. Sure. Uh-huh. Um, running in heels is a thing. Like, did yeah. you think your actress was not going to be in heels? You know, and they'll right. they'll <laughs> beforehand. I'll try and I'll try and get them to pitch me who they think they could double. You know, just as a game. Right. And then I'll I'll try and find footage or stills of them in dress shoes and dress heels and stuff yeah and like so yeah that uh that whole martial art fight in those what do you think like no nah, i couldn't do it yeah <laughs> exactly so you want to train at least in pumps uh something right. three inches heels and stuff you know and the guys it was lucky that the guys because some of them get kind of arrogant about how better they are versus women in stunts sure and i say look they have to do a stairfall naked yeah you you are wearing a hoodie and cargo pants. You could wear my pads, her pads, his pants. You could mm-hmm. you out all the pads. They got zipped because we want to see that it's a woman. So yep. shut the fo. Shut your mouth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's That's, true. Yeah. That, what a yeah. genius! What a genius way to teach as well. To be like, oh, here's the here's the techniques and stuff like that. Here's what's gonna happen. All right, boom, 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 boom. You're like, there's no better training than that. You can see them short out too instantly. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And they'll, they'll, I know that a lot of them will have taken that choreo that they worked on, perfected it all night to yep. come back the next day, fresh and super ready with their acting beats in there. And I'll be like, yeah, switch parts. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Yeah. It happens. It does happen. Yeah. It does happen. And uh, locations change and directors don't, you know, they want to add a certain move in the middle of all this. So they want to take out a certain move. You can't get married to what you've done. Yeah. Um, you got to, you got to be able to flex. So many factors. So many facts. Yep. And like people change their mind. That's another big thing that you can't like <laughs> prepare for. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And Learn we'll do it. the same, the same fight they did for a stationary camera. We'll shoulder hold that and just walk in a circle around them. And I'll just tell them hit, miss, hit, miss. Cause sure. now all the stacking they did for the one camera doesn't work because the camera's moved. Right. So you got to so recalculate. Cool. So you got to unstack your pumpkin <laughs> out yeah. of the way of the other person. <laughs> while restacking your hit so that it crosses right so you know there's a lot of math that happens instantly and you can see the math happening in their eyeballs sure <laughs> so sure. yeah that's again also good practice um and these are just basics never mind the super funky choreo right about you know oh, that's a great point so what what do you look for in like like if someone has like a stunt reel or like a demo what's something that like stands out it's it's funny because the the thing to do today is to send a bunch of coordinators reels. I mean, they're not, people aren't, you can't hustle a set. Uh, right. That's true. I, mean, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can hustle a set ever again, really the yeah. way things are going. Yeah. Um, so they'll just push reels through. And I've seen a bunch lately and it's funny because knowing the person's personality changes the way I talk to them. Totally. Even though I guess as a coordinator, you should just be kind of universal about stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, uh, <laughs> but also, uh, <laughs> It should be it should be short and concise. Try not to yeah. to be redundant. If you're redundant, like you show three times the same thing, uh, uh, good point. It, it's especially the gag, then we're gonna start pigeonholing you as the person that just does that. Right. Um, if you have a few different things you can show, uh, or and again, a lot of the stuff, especially now, has become like uh, gym footage, backyard footage. Mm-hmm. Uh, before you can get the work to show, you know, various were real work jobs on your reel that's sure. all you got you know yeah um the i want to know that you see what i see if you gave me this reel uh, and pitched it as check out these awesome fights and i'm like holy moly <laughs> dude, yeah this might suck then i know that you don't <laughs> you don't even have the eye yet totally I mean? yeah so, but some guys gonna be like you know we just worked on we did this in a day at a park um, I just needed to beef up my fight part of it. Um, and I'll, I'll see their resume and say, you know, you have X amount of years of this or you don't have any of this, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'll take those into consideration. One of my favorite stories uh, from back in the day was having to untrain. A, the, the producer's like, hey, man, I got the three-time world champ for you today. Like, awesome. 
<laughs> has he done any picture? Has he ever done picture fighting? Uh, no. Awesome. Oh, oh boy. So we'll have we'll have to <laughs> untrain that guy. Yeah. Meanwhile, the actor will come up and say, "I got two left feet, but I can understand direction, and I'll I'll mimic really well. So you tell me what to do, and I'll do it." And because they're an empty sponge, right? You can give them a lot, and they're great. Sure. You know? Um, untraining is hard. If you have just a reflex from not being hit, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they'll throw up their hands and they'll still try and take the reaction. <laughs> and we're yeah. like, Wait a <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> it's a good point. <laughs> um, it happens a lot. It happens a lot. Like the guys, they'll, they'll roll a shoulder like they would in normal uh, defense to, to cover their jaw. Sure. They'll still sell the hit. They'd be like, it looks like it bounced off your shoulder in a way because you got to, you got to just be caught. Uh, right. Okay. I'll try again. I'll try, you know, and it's, it's a real hurdle to, to overcome. Sure. Uh, a lot of times. So. But if you take picture fighting as its own thing Absolutely. and know that you have have these tools that you can draw from mm-hmm. and know that a camera only is two-dimensional most times. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, and that all you need to do is break the string or cross that frame to make that hit sell, then we can work with you really well. We can we can make you look like Bruce Lee or Chuck Norris, you know what I mean? Sure. That's so cool. So, I love that. Yeah. I love it. But it's also it's also the aesthetic. Like I I thought I fired myself uh second season <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh we, we had some uh we had some second unit uh people come in from the marvel stuff mm-hmm. and they they tried to uh put some of that choreo on on nando and i kept having to yell at the hey man quit posing they're making you pose he's like damn it yeah they are i shouldn't know <laughs> and uh finally one time i was like this isn't the marvel orient <laughs> it got it got really quiet and i was like oh crap oh no yeah, I think I found the line. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, luckily they changed up and uh, we came back to being what it was. And I didn't get let go. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> You're still there, Joe. And as we've learned, yeah. persistence is everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I felt a little too honest. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, dude, we've been talking for over an hour already. Look at us. Oh. You did it. You survived. Speaking of surviving. I survived. You're still here. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, man. That was fun. Dude, of course. That's such a blast. Uh, before I let you go, though, I got to ask, uh, where can people find you online and all that stuff? Uh, you know what's funny? I, uh, I'm i not online that much. I, I mean, I have Instagram Probably best. and Facebook. But yeah, you know, <laughs> that's the thing. I used, to, I used to get flooded with stuff. At the same time, I uh, I killed a brand that I had going. I changed it to something else. It's, sure. it's hard to find me. Um, but uh, yeah. Sure. Um, <laughs> Ninjo Perez on Instagram is usually the best way to get a hold of me. Love it. Love it. Just yell out your window if you're in California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keep doing it. It might work. It, listen, it's not impossible. <laughs> I've, I, I, I don't know why, but I've run the, into uh, Hito Koda. At oh, Disneyland. yeah? Probably, probably random, randomly like five times. <laughs> I'm like, Hito. He's like, Joe, are you stopping? I'm like, no, man. We just keep running into each other. Right. <laughs> we got to stop meeting like this. <laughs> it's just weird. Like Disneyland of all places. <laughs> it's yeah. where, the, where the magic happens. Where the magic happens. It is where the magic happens. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I love it. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. 
So until next time, be well.